Torchlight 2 is 13 years old this year and amazingly there is still a decent sized community playing it and more importantly enjoying the game. If you're new to Torchlight 2 or looking to get back into it again, here are 10 quick tips to help you get started. Respecting skills. You can remove the last few skill points you have placed and this can be a great way to try out how a new skill feels with the option to remove it if you dislike it. Sometimes you may also want to remove the initial skill too if it's not going to suit the playstyle you're looking for. But just be sure you do this when you reach the first quest hub or you will lose the ability to do so. Character Charge Bar Each class has a unique charge bar mechanic that fills up as you play. It may seem obvious, but using the charge bar to its full potential is important as it gives bonuses to your class and it costs nothing but the ability to keep fighting. For example, the Outlander's charge bar grants up to 10% bonus to casting speed, dodge chance, critical hit chance and the attack speed proportional to the amount of charge you have. Also, when empty, the next attack will inflict additional damage and it is guaranteed to stun the first enemy it hits. Side Quests when traveling between mage areas and also within them too, you will find side quests that really do not take long to complete. Generally, they are simple, go and kill this and come back to me for a reward type deal. Usually, they give decent gear within or as rewards and the experience gained too is worth the time. Gems Use gems as soon as you get them if you can and use the trader found in quest hubs to remove weaker gems if you have strong ones if your gear allows you to do so. Gems are an easy way to boost your resistances, armor, and damage. Replace your gear. Obvious as it might be, but remember to keep updating your gear. It is easy to get stuck on what was a good piece of gear when you initially picked it up, but higher armor and weapon levels allow you to use higher level gems and the gear itself will generally have better statistics overall. You will find if you hold onto armor for too long, the bonus it's giving is less than if you just replace the piece of armor itself. Feed your pet. You will find food as you progress through the game and you can give this to your pets to change into other creatures giving them time limited abilities, such as becoming a spider that can shoot immobilizing web attacks, or a war beast to increase the damage significantly. At high levels, you can permanently change them into these creatures too. Fishing. Fishing can yield good results and is the main way to get food for your pets. You can on occasion get some gear from fishing too, or just scrap you can sell at vendors for gold. Fishing is great, but don't spend all your time on it unless you're looking for a particular pet food. That said, I always find it's worth the time stopping to fish at secret fishing areas as they have a higher chance to give better fish and gear. Item identification. Most items will identify themselves if you're patient enough as they will identify at certain levels. Sometimes you may want to identify a piece of gear earlier with scrolls if you think the item is a genuine upgrade, but if it's just one or two levels away, I would opt to wait it out especially at lower levels where gold is low and you'll likely want that gold for healing and mana potions over identification scrolls. Unique and legendary items must always be identified however. Spell slots. I find many people forget about this one, but spell slots can give you boost to your damage, armor and abilities. Having a permanent boost to your armor or damage or having a healing spell in addition to your potions is a great to equip. At higher levels, the armor and damage boosts go a long way to pushing your build that little bit further. Playing on LAN mode Even if you're playing single player, playing on LAN mode allows you to do something that single player mode does not, which is to re-roll the world. Single player does not respawn enemies and therefore if you wanted to run an area multiple times or farm a particular boss, this is not possible. In LAN mode, tick re-roll world whenever you want to repopulate. This will of course change the map layout and reset any exploration you may have done, but it's worth it for the benefit. So these are my top tips for Torchlight 2. What are your thoughts? Do you have more to add? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks and stay safe.